Francisco, many people believe that the universe is populated by millions of planets with intelligent life. And the problem that those people have is, where are they? Why haven't we seen them? Why haven't there been any manifestations of them? They have a lot of reasons excusing why we haven't seen them, but they, they're searching. What do you think about why we haven't seen alien life? Well, first let me uh, start with my conviction that the probability of intelligent life evolving is so incredibly low um, of orders of magnitudes which are billions uh, greater than the possible number of stars and planets and in the universe and galaxies. But again, if they were there, if intelligent life would have arisen somewhere, they would have allowed us to know it. They would have communicated with us because Imagine what has happened to human culture, I mean, human technology, just in the last couple of hundred years, how much we have advanced. In 200 more years, we certainly should be able to send signals and communicate with the rest of space at the rate at which knowledge is advancing. And certainly in thousands or millions of years. Exactly. Who knows what power. And if intelligent life has evolved somewhere else in the universe, some of them would have evolved earlier than us, so they must be thousands and millions of years ahead of us. Yeah. And if, of course, if they are behind us, it's useless to try to communicate with them because they would never understand our signals. So I believe the efforts to communicate with aliens, with intelligent life in the universe, is, is a wasted effort. I, I don't believe they are there. <laughs> well, people who do this, uh, who have a great quest, and I, I admire that, have reasons why the aliens may not be uh, 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 communicating with us, even though they may be very numerous. One of which is maybe they don't think it's worthwhile. Maybe they're just sitting on their planet and they're just not curious. Maybe curiosity is a human trait and is not, if you're a very intelligent species, you just want to sit where you are until you kind of use up the resources of your planet, then you just hop to another one and, and that's all you should do. And it's, well, <laughs> to me, there's a sign of lack of intelligence. I mean, intelligence seeks knowledge, curiosity. I, if, if some intelligent beings exist, they want to know whether other creatures are there like them, where they can communicate, and they will make the effort to communicate. I believe it's not that intelligence is a, a, a distinctive human attribute. Um, that makes us curious. I think that intelligence makes anybody curious because being intelligent means seeking knowledge. You cannot avoid that. Why is it, do you think, that many physicists and some certainly biologists do believe there is intelligent life throughout the universe? I don't know any serious evolutionist who believes that there is intelligent life in the universe. I think the ones who believe in that are either physicists or biologists who do not understand the evolutionary process. Mm -hmm. You understand the evolutionary process, you don't believe there is intelligence anywhere else in the universe. I, I don't know any evolutionist who believes in that. Because of the extraordinary number of sequences that have to happen in, in a line to produce intelligence. That's right, because the incredible improbability, which goes beyond anything that the universe can handle, of, of intelligent life coming about. The fact that there is no evidence from ali aliens, uh, you know, they are not communicating with us, confirms to me that. But I don't expect them to communicate with us because I don't think they are there. <laughs> well, this brings up some philosophical issues, and I find it fascinating that uh, both the theologically disposed and the atheistically disposed have different spins on whether there are alien life, intelligent life or not. Either way, each one can, can explain it. The, the theologian, the, the, the theistic people would say if there is intelligent life in the universe, well, that means that God has wanted to populate the universe with intelligence. If there's no intelligent life, they'll say, look, that makes Earth very special. 
The atheist would take exactly the opposite. If yeah. life is prevalent through the universe, they'd say, see, life is not so special. We don't need God. And if there's no life in the universe, see, life is very, uh, uh, the universe is inhospitable to life, and so there's no creator. So I, I think it's not, each side can take their own philosophical issue. Exactly, and that brings <laughs> a very important point that science and religion are two different kinds of knowledge. They are seeking different kinds of truths they are not incompatible for the reason that truth cannot go against truth, but it, they are compatible with any version. When it, they can interpret whatever is the case yeah. their own way. The believer can interpret there being life, uh, intelligent life in the universe uh, as being and uh, reflecting the power of God, mm -hmm. as they can interpret our being unique <laughs> as being <laughs> reflecting the uniqueness right. that God has given us. Right, right. And the scientists can do the same. I mean, the, the atheist, the scientist has no right to say that there is no God if, and trying to base that uh, conclusion in there being li intelligent life in the universe or there not being life in the universe. Science does not have anything to say about God. It just has nothing to say that God exists, but that has nothing to say about not there not being a God.